Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it NASDAQ at a crossroads because that's exactly where I think the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ ETF is sitting at a crossroads. You can make the bearish case and you can make the bullish case. And in a few minutes, I'll talk about both of those and tell you which way I'm leaning. We're also going to take a look at a brief look at XLK as we look at these charts. And then I want to look at two uh, stocks that are electric vehicle related, QuantumScape, QS, ticker symbol, which is a uh, solid state lithium battery manufacturer, and uh, Xping Incorporated, which is an electric vehicle uh, company out of China. All right, we're going to take a look at the Dow here. So on a weekly basis, up 1,282.34 points, continues to move very strongly to the upside. We're sitting at new all-time highs. Uh, you know, we were making the bearish. We had this reversal pattern right here. Thought we were going to get some follow through. Really didn't get much, a little bit. And then it turned on us the previous week. So the short term bear scenarios are out the window. You can't have them when you're punching to a new high. And we're watching to see the, you know, the wave structure in here. I think the next five to seven weeks are going to be very, very critical by the end of April. All right, so let's take a look at the SPX. The SPX is doing something very similar. It too is sitting at a new closing weekly high, up 101.40 points for the week. So continuing to trend strongly, uh, watching for you know the wave structure again, the short-term pattern that we had to the downside uh, definitely is uh, confirmed as corrective. I mean, you, when you start punching to new highs, uh, you can't maintain the bearish case, the bearish scenario. All right, so let's take a look at the Qs. For the week, here is the uh, QQQs up 6.7. I'm just going to call it the Qs. Up 6.78, inside, up type candle. Third week in a row, though, below that 10-week moving average. We'll see. I think it's trying to turn. Here's how it looks on a daily. Now, it's interesting. Here's the head and shoulders pattern that a lot of folks were talking about. And, you know, I saw it. Uh, I had it talked to the members about it. And, you know, we had this drawn in here. And, of course, it was fitting with the Ellie Wave pattern we were seeing to the downside. There's always the risk that this was going to turn into a potential ABC pattern. Okay. And that could very well be what we've got. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But also, when you just look at this from a head and shoulders pattern for perspective, I think this is failing. You break down, either your breakdown bar is this bar right here, or it's this bar right here. Now, either one, you got to sit back and say, where do you say it's wrong? Where do you call uncle on it? To me, it would be either above this high, which we've clearly broken above, or above this high even, which is a lot, I mean, you're giving a lot back to, to uh, give that as your stop up in here. But we've broken above that also on Thursday. So I just think this looks like it's failing. And it's very similar. Uh, I think this did this. back. Look at this pattern back over here. Look at this case. I'm just going to show this real quick. I mean, you could sit and make the same case back here where you say, well, this kind of looked like a possible head and shoulders pattern. And here's what I'm talking about. And this was at the end of the summer of last year, a little sh shoulder, a big head. And then we had this little shoulder right here. And here's a neckline across the uh, across the bottom. You know, and you sit back and, and you can, you know, bring it out so it's a little bit more obvious as to what we're talking about. Well, where did it fail? It started to break down in here. You think, well, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go. But then now, look, you break above whether it's this candle or this candle. I mean, you st once, once you start breaking above, you're really weakening the scenario. you got to sit back and say, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, that head and shoulders failed. Okay, well... It seems to be the same kind of thing happening. Now, here was the bearish scenario, or here is the bearish scenario that says, you know, we were in a fifth intermediate wave that looked like we hit the peak on uh, February 16th. We were looking for five waves, thought we had them. We were looking for an initial five wave move down here, thought we had that too. And you can make the case that it's either five waves or it's an ABC. And I'll show you that in a minute. But now what I think is happening in here 
is this pullback. This move, this first leg up, was five waves, this A wave. And that's why I think we're in a zigzag from a bearish standpoint. You know, it still could be the case that we have a corrective wave two pullback going on and we pull back up to this trend line that we smashed down through. So that could still very well be the case that that's what's happening. And here's the, the uh, short term pattern in here. OK, but you can also make the case that says, yeah, this looks like more like a three wave move. Let me go to that scenario. And that from this low back here in September, that we had wave one, two, strong wave three, a zigzag wave four, and now we're off and trying to get going in a wave, a wave five. That this was the end of the corrective pattern. Now these look very similar. Normally you're looking for them to alternate. They don't have to. It's not an Elliott wave rule. It does. There's a, it's a guideline. It says you look for corrective patterns to alternate. Okay. Well, it didn't. <laughs> At least in this scenario. And then what you're looking at is that, OK, uh, you know, maybe wave A ended here with this kind of a pattern right here with this nice five wave move down. And then we got a little zigzag for, for B. And then we got our five wave move down here for C. And now we're off and running with a five wave, wave one and a wave two. And then we'll see what happens now. The reason, the only reason I'm leaning towards this scenario in bull camp is from what I'm seeing on the intraday when I start looking at the 195, the two hour, the one hour, and what's happening in there, it looks like it's turning. And that I'm seeing it on numerous other technology related stocks. That's why uh, I'm leaning to that camp. But we'll see what happens. And, you know, and back on the head and shoulders thing, I wanted to show you something real quick, too. Let me go back over here. Um, you know, same thing happened on XLK. OK, and and XLK, you know, you came back up. Uh, we had this breakdown bar. Look how beautiful this is. Nice horizontal trend line, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Uh, horizontal neckline is what I meant to say. Here's your breakdown candle. Well, then all of a sudden, here we go. On Tuesday, we break above that. So you'd almost sit back and say, well, it kind of failed on Tuesday. And then we're, you know, struggling to turn. And I drew this line in here because you start to break out of this line, which we started to do on Thursday. It's a sign that, you know, this uh, corrective pattern may be ending. And, you know, if we get further breakout of that to the upside, it'll be confirming that for sure. All right, let's take a look at QuantumScape. OK, this is all the data I've got on QuantumScape. And you can see it started trading in the fall of last year. So I'm counting this as intermediate one, two, three. I think four just finished down here. The, I'm marking it as four. A deep 50% retracement, actually a little bit deeper than you normally would look for on a wave four. I'd normally be looking for 38%. But now we're starting to make a move and watching to see do we break through this trend line and start pushing higher up here and complete the fifth wave. Looking for five waves as it pushes higher. And when I start drilling down and looking at intraday data, it looks like it wants to uh, continue. It looks like it's trying to turn, let's put it that way. 50-day moving average of volume, 19 million shares, so heavily traded. Let's take a look at XPing. OK, XPing is a similar thing. Here's all the data I've got. This is, again, daily chart and the low back here in September of last year. I think we had a very strong uh, five-wave move up for, you know, I'm calling an intermediate wave one. You could almost call it uh, you know, primary wave one because it was so, so big. Uh, but uh, it's six one half dozen of the other. Right now, here's the wave two pullback, which got very deep, a little bit greater than 61.8% of the first wave. And here, a big, strong zigzag move to the downside. Now I'm watching for this to keep pushing up here. I'd like to see it break this trend line and keep going. Now, what am I doing with this? these dotted lines? This is creating like a base channel for wave uh you know, from the origin to wave two, projecting from wave one. If there's intermediate wave three is truly underway, it should break above and break out of this base channel. But 
first things first, sometimes you can get a little choppy in the beginning. So we'll see, watching for five waves in here, would like to see this continue to push up and break this trend line right here. The average daily volume here is 25 million shares a day. So heavily traded on XPeng. All right, that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, uh, give it the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this kind of information, we talk about this type of thing every day over on the website, joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.